remember a time in my life when I got out of the will of God. It seemed like everything just wrecking for me. Things weren't too good. But I, I heard his voice. I heard him calling me, Mary. He said, child, come home. And, and I thought, well, God, I've been so bad that how could you forgive me? But you know he does. It don't matter what you've been into. He's here to forgive you this morning. Yes. It don't matter how bad you've been or how bad you think you've been. God loves you. And he's not wanting you to go take a bath before you come to him. He just wants you to come as you are. He loves you right where you are this morning. Yes. He yeah. wants to reach out and he wants to hold you and he wants to comfort you. He's a good God. The sermon's going to be a little bit different, so hang on. That's all I can tell you. Don't mean to offend anyone, but sometimes that happens, I guess. We're going to the 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world when it, he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, preacher of righteousness, <coughs> and seven others. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes, and made them an example of what's going to happen to the ungodly. And sometimes in life, it's like going down a path. And we start out the day we're born, we begin traveling down the path of life. And as we're on this path, things go good sometimes and they go bad sometimes. But if we continue down the path of life, we come to a fork in the road. And we all will come to the fork in the road. Yeah. Now, as we come to this fork in the road, if we look to one side, it don't really, really look so good. It's rocky. It's going uphill. It seems there's dangers on that path. And we think, ah, I don't know. But if we miss the fine print here, it says, the way to life, the way to eternal life. And the other path, man, it looks smooth, it looks good. There's bright lights down there. There's shiny things, there's things to tempt us, things we would desire. And we might think, man, this is the road I want to walk. I've got all this pleasure and there's everything I can do, I can enjoy my life to the fullest. <coughs> So we walk down this road, we choose the road, and we miss the fine print. It says to death. But we continue on that path, and we become so engulfed in all the pleasures of the world, where soon our mind is just blinded to it. And as we go down this path, there's an exit up there, and it says the straight and narrow way. But we ignore it, and we continue walking, down the path we're walking down. And it turns into a two-lane highway. It's not a path anymore, but it's a two-lane highway, and we're picking up speed. We go on down, and there's another exit sign. It says, narrow way, the way to life. And we say, not now. We continue to walk down the broad way. Now it's a four-lane highway, and man, it's running. We're picking up speed. We're moving now. Bright lights, flashing music, all kinds of pleasure, all kinds of sin to get involved in. And we're just raking it in and we're enjoying it. All of a sudden it turns into an eight-lane highway. Man, it's broad. And we're really wrapped up in it. It's great. We're having the time of our life. And we fail to see that life's exit sign there. That says the pathway to life. And we pass it up. And that ain't lane highway now. There's many people on it's a Broadway, it's full of people. And we're on this way and, and we're we're running and we're running and we look up ahead and, and something is wrong. The road ends. There's a great gulf, there's a great chasm there that we're gonna follow, and we try to put on the brakes. <coughs> But we can't. 
because the crowd is pushing. Those behind us are pushing and they're pushing us. And we're at the very edge and we're, no, no, no. But the push of the crowd causes us to tumble over that great chasm. We lose all sense of direction. We're spinning head over hand and sideways and sideways. We're falling. It feels like 100 miles an hour one second. Then it feels like we're floating in this total darkness. Amen. It's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face. And, and, and you're wondering. You're, you're just all messed up in your head. You don't understand <coughs> what's happening. And you fall and you fall. And it seems like it takes an eternity. And all of a sudden, you start smelling things. You smell the smell of sulfur. You feel the heat coming up. It's burning. You smell rotten flesh. You smell every vile thing that you can imagine. And you tumble in and you land on the ground. And it's total darkness, but there's still fire there. You can't comprehend it. Your mind can't comprehend what's going on. There's fire everywhere, but it's still total darkness. And your mind is pierced with all the sin that you have done all your life. Every sin that you've committed since the age of accountability until you fall into that chasm is flooding your mind, is penetrating your brain, and you're remorseful for it. You're sorry for it. But you can't change that. You look around and there's people in torment. There's people screaming. There's maggots everywhere. There's every vile thing that you can imagine. People screaming on this side. People screaming on this side. Every evil demon you can imagine tormenting people. You're about to lose your mind. It's that bad. You see an iron door there. And it says the corridor of the doomed and the damned. And you open that door and you go in. And you're walking down the corridor of the doomed and the damned. And there's cells on every side. There's screaming coming from every one of those cells. The first cell we reach is Cain. And we hear screams coming inside. And he said, get it off of me. Get it off of me. My brother's blood is all over me. Oh, get it off of me. I'm covered with his blood. Why, God, did I kill him? Why did I take that rock and hit him? Why did I destroy my brother? Oh, oh, God, please, please don't take the blood off. It's terrible, terrible thing. The screams are so intense. We can't get them out of our head. We don't know what we're going to do. We go on down to the next cell. It simply says the rich man. And if we look inside that cell, there's a man there in torment. He's got money all over him. He's completely buried with money. It's covering him. And it's hot from the flame of hell. It's burning him. And he's saying, oh God, Oh God, why did I treat Lazarus the way I treated him? Why didn't I feed him? I knew he was in need. Why didn't I help him? And that voice screams out, Oh God, God, send Lazarus to dip his finger in water to cool one drop of water to cool my parched tongue. Oh God, have mercy on my brother. Send somebody there to warn them. And our heart's heavy. Because there's no repentance in hell. No. Saying you're sorry in hell don't mean anything. No. It's not going to accomplish anything. Amen. It's terrible. It's too late. <coughs> we go on up to the next cell that says Achan. And there's a man in there and he's in torment. He's trying to hold his nose. He said, I can't stand the smell. I can't stand the smell of my family burning with fire. I can't stand it. I still hear their screams and they're stoned to death. Why? Because I stole Babylonian garments. 
Because I stole God's gold. I stole God's silver. When he said, don't touch anything, I took it for myself. Oh, God, if I hadn't I took them garments, if I hadn't I took the silver, if I hadn't I took the gold, my family would still be alive and everything would be okay. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But it's too late. It's too late when you're in hell. Yeah. Haman. This is from the book of Esther. There's an evil guy there. His name's Haman. He hates Jewish people because of Mordecai. So he tries to have all the Jewish people killed. He wants Mordecai to bow down to him, but he won't. So he builds this gallows. A big, tall gallows to hang Mordecai. He's pouring his heart out now to God. Oh, God, I see the gallows. Oh, Lord, the rope is around my neck. It's choking me. Oh, God, please. But it's too late. It's too late. It's way too late. We go down to the next cell. The screams are penetrating our mind. There's a man in our name, King Herod. He said, get them away from me. Oh, I see them babies that I killed. Get them away from me. I can't stand it. I had them killed because I was jealous of Jesus. Oh, God, get them away from me. I see them every minute of my day. I see my soldiers killing them. Oh, God, have mercy on me. But it's too late. It's way too late. Way too late. We go to another cell and we see abortion doctors there. Precious children being destroyed. Precious little boys. Precious little girls. Because some doctor decides he can take a life. He's screaming, oh God, why did I do it? Why did I pull that baby apart? Oh God, have mercy. But he missed the exit Man. that led to the way of life. And forever, Willie, he'll be tormented. He'll see that as long as he lives. It'll never change. Can we visit one more cell? One more cell. We go up to this cell. We note something different, Solomon. There's no screaming coming. It's deathly still. It's quiet. And we look up above and you see your name. Solomon Collins. Willie. Rick. Steve Kennard. Jimmy McCoy. And we look at, and, and we don't want to look inside that cell. We don't want to imagine what evil thing is in there. It's too quiet. We're compelled to open that cell up and we crack it open and there's a light coming out of that cell. Even in the pits of hell, there's a light. And then in the center of that cell, there's a cross that's covered with blood. And the voice of God speaks to you. And he says, I died for you that you don't have to come here. I suffered death for you that you don't have to go to hell. I took your place in all this. Why? Because I love you. Now this morning we're on the path of life. There's two ways to go. The path that goes to life. The path that goes to death. Which would you choose? Which way would you choose today? It wasn't the rich man's riches that sent him to hell. It wasn't his money. No. It was his unrepentant heart where he failed to repent and confess that Jesus is Lord. He would have took all the money that he could ever, ever amass or obtain. Every, every dollar. And trade it for that one 
drop of water. So how about you this morning? Is everything all right between you and God? Have we got anything we need to fix up? Any unconfessed sins? Maybe you've never even accepted Him as your Savior. He loves you. He died for you. Please, as you're standing at this crossroads,